Hey, welcome to the first pandemic episode of Analog Output. Hope you're all doing well, staying home if you can, washing your hands, flattening the curve, and getting through all this. Uh, hopefully, we'll all come out all right. Anyway, what have I been doing? Well, I've made this. This is a voltage controlled filter, and this is a a unique module for me so far because is this is not something that's commercially available these circuit boards um, I designed and had them fabricated for me uh, the front panel I designed had that fabricated for me uh, first time I've done that and let me tell you about how that went so you I think had heard that back in January I started learning about the KiCad software package, which you can use to make circuit diagrams and to lay out printed circuit boards. And after doing some simple stuff with that, I decided I wanted to try something a little more ambitious. And after thinking about some circuits that I sort of had in mind, I decided maybe the thing to do is play around with a circuit that I don't need to debug really that already exists and see what I can do with that. So I went looking online and I landed at Music from Outer Space. For those of you who are not familiar with Music from Outer Space, this is a website that was set up by a guy named Ray Wilson who was big in do-it-yourself synthesis and if you go to the website and you click on the synth DIY tab, you can see over on the left, there's a long list of analog synthesizer modules that Wilson designed. And uh, here's one of them. You can see he's got posted a very long explanation of how it works. He's got the complete circuit diagram. He's got uh, layouts for the printed circuit board components. He's got patterns for the printed circuit boards themselves. So you could take those patterns, you could make a printed circuit board. Here he's got a suggested front panel for you. Here he's got a layout of the uh, wiring diagram for the front panel. Here he's got a bill of materials. So all the information that you would need to make your own version of this particular module that he designed. And then there's a whole ton of other modules over here on the left. So, for instance, there is this state variable filter. And again, he's got, um, you know, he's got the complete circuit diagram. He's got a detailed description of how it works. And he's got the printed circuit board diagram and the suggested front panel, the wiring diagram, the bill of materials, all that. Again, you could make one of these voltage controlled state variable filters if you wanted to. If you don't have the means or just the desire to make one of these printed circuit boards, Wilson also had printed circuit boards made that he could sell to you. So you could go to this tab here and order yourself a printed circuit board. Um, sourcing the components is up to you. Producing the front panel is up to you. But the circuit boards are available. Wilson was not working in Eurorack format though. So uh, he had his own particular format in mind. He used um, electrical conventions that were basically consistent with Eurorack, but he didn't have Eurorack style power connectors on the boards. He also tended to use um, panel mounted knobs, uh, potentiometers, and uh, switches and so forth, and then wired those con controls to the printed circuit board, which I guess he mounted on standoffs uh, to the front panel. Front panel was, you know, not sized for Eurorack. It was sized for whatever Wilson was using. So these are not Eurorack module boards. These are sort of generic module boards. But you could adapt them into your, your, your Eurorack system. 
Okay, and if you looked at further down, he's got other stuff here. He's got some guitar projects. He's got a, a fuzz tone. He's got a guitar to gate converter. And further down there, he's got some lo-fi noise boxes, Alien Screamer and Echo Rocket. And there's the uh, weird sound generator, um, which I made one of those a few years ago myself. And then further down, he's got a list called uh, Music from Outer Space Oldies But Goodies. And these are modules, designs that were sort of superseded by later versions, but they're still pretty good. And here's, for instance, another voltage controlled state variable filter, an older version. He doesn't give you as much information. There's no long explanation of how it works. There's not as much detail given about the circuit board layout and so forth, but he's got everything there. He's got the, the, the circuit board diagram. He does have the uh, PC board layout and the build materials and so forth. So you could build one of these things. It's a, uh, a different and simpler design than the later one. It's, it's still pretty good. Now, Wilson, sadly enough, died a few years ago and music from outer space later on was acquired by SynthCube and they've kept that site going and they continue to supply the printed circuit boards that Wilson designed. But what they've also done is for some of Wilson's modules, they have pr produced uh, Eurorack versions of them. So they've taken Wilson's original schematic and they've made new PC board layouts that have the Eurorack power connectors. They have uh, board mounted panel components as is more conventional with most Eurorack module designs these days. Uh, they also converted over the designs from through hole technology to surface mount components. So uh, if you're comfortable with uh, surface mount building you can get yourself a PC board and panel or a full kit to make a, a surface mount version of some of Wilson's designs, or I guess you can buy a, a built and tested module. But that's just for some of the, the standard modules up at the top of his list, the oldies but goodies down below. If you wanna make one of those, you're on your own. Well, that's what I decided to do. I took a look at and said, you know, that voltage controlled state variable filter, that's something that I think I could handle. It's um, uh, a, a bit more of a challenge than uh, the simple stuff I'd been doing before that, but on the other hand, it's not so overwhelming uh, a project. So I took that uh, filter schematic uh, and I basically reproduced it in KiCad, and then I started working on making a PC board layout with Eurorack power connector and with um, board mounted panel controls and went through a couple versions of those designs, came up with something I finally liked and uh, sent the board designs off to be fabricated. Uh, made a front panel. The front panel is also designed in KiCad as if it were a printed circuit board, but without a circuit on it. There's, there's copper on both sides, but there's no circuit etched into it. It's just solid copper and then a layer of solder resist and then a, a uh, silk screen on top of that and you know holes drilled where they need to be. It's a fairly easy and straightforward way to produce a front panel that I think is better looking and more accurately laid out than anything I'd be likely to be able to do on my own. And I, th I think it came out fairly well. So I uploaded the boards, I had them fabricated, and once I got them, I put them all together. If you haven't, there's actually two circuit boards here. If you haven't seen this style of design before, there's one circuit board here that has the, um, the panel components mounted on it. And there's a few resistors and things there, but it's mostly just the panel components. And then there's a header here, uh, plugs in to the corresponding header on this board, which has the, um, the main circuitry on it. This is actually the widest Eurorack module I have, partly because that's the width that 
this circuit came out at that with you know maybe if I was a better designer I could squeeze it smaller but also I needed that width to take up the the controls that I wanted on here you know and I maybe could have squeezed the controls closer together especially if I used smaller knobs here and closer together but that's sort of one of my uh, concerns lately something I've been thinking about with Eurorack is that a lot of the time the panel controls the knobs and switches are very small and crowded together and that's starting to bug me and that's something I'm going to say more about but I really wanted to have some fairly decent sized knobs here with some fairly decent spacing so it came out 12 HP wide and that's fine with me that's um, I like the design this is my future self cutting in to say that I forgot to mention the first time I put this together I discovered that I made a mistake on that board there um, four out of these five potentiometers were connected up backwards so if you wanted to turn up the volume on the signal you had to turn it counterclockwise yeah um, just me not paying much attention when I was laying things out so I had to uh, go back and correct the circuit board and order a new circuit board and put that in I mean it worked just fine as long as you didn't mind turning your knobs the wrong way but I minded turning their knobs the wrong way so I corrected it you notice on the back there the uh, most of the electronic components are mounted on on that side of the board but on this side we've got the power connector and there's also a trimmer resistor uh, there's two electrolytic capacitors which I thought were going to go on that side and they didn't fit so I put them on the other side the trimmer by the way is a calibration for the volt per octave um, control voltage and if you look on the music from outer space website uh, for this module he doesn't say anything about how to do that calibration but if you look at his description of his later state variable filter it also has a similar calibration on it and he does say basically you just have to change adjust the trimmer to get 18 millivolts on the trimmer uh, with a one volt change in the control voltage so you you put in a control voltage you know you have it up, hooked up to a keyboard you play two notes an octave apart uh, that can gives you a control voltage change of one volt and then what you want to do is measure the control voltage here and adjust it until the control voltage change from one to the other is 18 millivolts and that's how you calibrate it anyway that's how it works this stuff uh, screws together once you've got it plugged in the board's plugged together there's a couple screws you put in to hold it together and I will do that and put it into the rack and we'll give it a listen all right setup here is about as simple as it gets we've got a square wave coming in we've got a triangle low frequency oscillator coming into the control voltage got the output we're listening to it that's about it and turn up the signal there it is pass filter turn down the frequency turn it up okay if we switch over to here got band pass Our three states we can turn up a control voltage put that up band pass Now 
Wilson does say this thing oscillates if you turn up the resonance high enough. This one doesn't. I don't know what's different, but it does not self-oscillate. That's okay. But if you turn up the resonance high enough, it's it's got quite a sharp edge on it. It uh, it makes these sort of clicky artifacts here, which oh, probably not all that desirable. Then again, if you don't like it, you can just back off on the resonance control. I sort of regret putting these three attenuators in there. They weren't part of Wilson's original circuit. I added them in. But they're so close together, you have to use very tiny knobs on them, and it's kind of awkward to manipulate them without bumping into each other. I'm not sure that was the best design choice, but there you go. Anyway, that's what it sounds like. So there you are, the Music from Outer Space Voltage Controlled State Variable Filter. Hope you enjoyed that. If you did, like and subscribe. You know how it goes. And yeah, I've got a couple more modules I'm going to be starting to build soon and a bunch of ideas for other future projects. So stay tuned. See you next time on Analog Output. And be safe. <laughs>